Did you make us live? Yes, ma'am, we're live. Okay. Well, Happy New Year, Linda. Hello, Aubrey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. I'm excited to get started. 
I know I'm excited too. And I think everybody else is excited. We've seen a lot of questions and a lot of excitement and a lot of people saying they are ready and waiting to get started. So welcome. We see your comments coming in, which is fantastic. And we are going to get started here. The first thing that I want to do is go over a couple housekeeping items. Um, pretty much wanting, this is the biggest question I think we get. Can I watch it later if I'm busy? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Um, we are streaming live to YouTube. We're also streaming live a couple different places in Facebook. And the replays will remain in all of those places. And if you ordered the Barn Quilt Collection, we will also be emailing you the replays afterwards. It's always fun to join live, though. I think there's just something about being live. If you can, that's fantastic. So if you are joining us live, we do ask that you give StreamYard, which is our streaming service, permission so that we can view your comment and your name. And it's super easy to do if you just open another window and go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. It'll ask you just a couple questions and you'll be good to go. And I see a lot of names in here. So it's, if you do it once, you're good forever. Um, so a lot of you have already done it. The other thing in our housekeeping items is um, I wanted to let you know that we do have, we have really good customer service. We pride ourselves on making ourselves available to you. Um, we have a real person named Nina who answers the phone <laughs> and unless she's on another call, she will call you right back if you have to leave a message. But our phone number is there as well as her email address. Um, we are doing this through Facebook and YouTube, and you're welcome to comment in there. But if your question's not being answered or you're just not sure about something, the very best thing to do is contact us directly. We get a ton of Facebook comments and messages, and we just don't want you to get lost in there. Uh, we'd rather take care of you right away. All right. The third and almost final housekeeping is we do have a couple updates. They're very minor and they're two PDF documents. We are going to talk about that today. Um, as soon as I tell you one other thing, which is I wanted to give you guys a look at the schedule and the topics. Linda, do you want to talk about the topics? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Today we are going to talk about our fabric and thread key. And there's a fabric and thread key for both of your quilts, for the metal star as well as the rolling star. So we're going to go over that. There's some different things in each of them that I want to highlight so, uh, so you won't be confused. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to stitch out one rolling star block and one metal star block, and we'll get them trimmed. So that's what we're going to cover today. So there's a lot of info that we're going to talk about. And then next week, we're going to talk about joining the Rolling Star. We're going to talk about part one of joining the Rolling Star. And I prepared, prepared a video to show that because it takes time. And I didn't want to take a lot of time and sewing a lot of seams. So what you won't see is me just stitching. You'll just see what, where you're supposed to stitch and, and all of that good information. But so the video for part one will be Wednesday the 10th. For part two, it'll be Wednesday the 17th. And both of those days will also discuss joining Meadow Star. So uh, the next two Wednesdays after that, we're joining the, the quilts together. And then the last Wednesday, we're going to talk about our edge to edge quilting files and demonstrate that. And I'm also going to throw in some information. I forgot to tell you this, Aubrey. We're going to do a little information on the um, the edging that I did for these quilts, it's a facing edging. So we're going to talk about that as well. So that's our lineup for the next four Wednesdays. Good. Okay. <laughs> that's fantastic. And then now I'm going to pop up the update sheet, which is kind of small, but we're going to go through it and we're going to show <laughs> you where to access it. So Linda, do you want to touch on this? Yeah. So I did discover a few little changes that I had to make on um, some instructions and also the fabric and thread key. So let's talk about metal star instructions. That's the first one. On page five, I changed the block label from C5 to C6, a very minor change. You would have figured it out on your own, but you also would have mentioned it to me. So I, I went ahead and fixed that. <laughs> so you, you can re-download that and, and kind of get rid of your original file and keep that one. And then the other thing, uh, one of our users pointed out that I forgot to put instructions for the optional embroidery files for the wool. Um, so I added that. 
<clears throat> and we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. And then the Rolling Star Fabric and Thread Key on pages four, five, and six, the pedal fabric cutting instructions, I adjusted them. Um, so you can download that. And then also on the fabric and thread key for Rolling Star, I changed some wording to direct you to the correct page for cutting. So minor changes, but nonetheless, you don't want to be confused and go ahead and download these. And you're going to show them where to do that, right, Aubrey? I am. I'm actually going to share my screen and take you guys over. Now, if you um, purchase this as a digital download, you can just go back into your account on our website and download everything. Or you can do what anyone who would get the USB would want to do, which is go to our Facebook group, which is Hoop Sisters Quilt in the Hoop VIPs. I think a lot of you are already in there, um, but they're in here. And I'm going to show you exactly where to go. First, the featured section, by the way, this has got all the good information, all the reminders, all the dates and all that kind of stuff. But where you're going to want to go for anything barn quilt related is the guides. Hopefully you can see my mouse wiggling around there. And if you click guides, the first <clears throat> one is just customer service. It tells you how to get a hold of us. Um, the second guide is the barn quilt collection. And I have a lot of stuff in here. I've got um, our workshops, our original workshops are in here, fabric requirements, and I have the four PDF documents that were updated um, just recently. As of this morning, those are in there as well. So I wanted to be sure that you guys knew exactly where to go to get those. But if all else fails, you can always get a hold of us. Um, I'm going to pop our customer service number up on the screen there. So you can either download it if you purchased it as a digital download, or you can just go to our Facebook group and get your hands on those PDF documents with just some minor changes. But I forgot I wanted you wanted to show something else while we were in that group. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've seen it, but I was excited. I know. And like she said, there are minor changes. You probably would have figured it out anyway, just like our friend Miss Joni did, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at Look this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's the metal star that she's made. It's beautiful. Oh. Joni's always the first one to get done. <laughs> I love it. Look how beautiful. Looks like looks like she used a little batik, a little bit of grunge. Gorgeous. It I'm is. curious if she's watching what size she made. I don't think she mentioned that in her in her post, but it's beautiful. My guess is she's watching. That's my guess. <laughs> but just so you know, Joni, Joni, <clears throat> we love Joni because she's on all the lives and she does all the quilts. You do not have to be done right now because nope. we are just getting started nope. and you don't even have to keep up with us, but just learn something new and trust the process. And um, this is all supposed to be informative so that you can kind of dive in later. Don't feel like you have to be sewing right now or anything like that. Right, Linda? Yeah. In fact, I don't recommend you sew because I'm going to be yapping a lot. And you might miss something, <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. So you want your demo cam on? I'm going to turn sure. it over to you. Okay. Yep. Let me see. Okay. So I'm going to start out today with the rolling star and then we will move on to the metal star. But this is the Rolling Star Fabric and Thread Key. So I thought I'd just page through it and kind of tell you what it's all about. On your first page, you'll see that it shows uh, the quilt in color with an overlay of the quilting. So, and then you can also see the block names overlaid on there as well. So it kind of gives you an idea where all these different blocks go. And then the page, page two, I showed you some colorways for, for this particular sample the colors that I used and where I put them. And then I have another one that I did with these colors. So just to give you an idea. And I'm doing a third colorway um, for our sew along here today. And then we go through and then we see Rolling Star Large, Rolling Star Medium, and then there's a Rolling Star Small. And it's going to show you all of your fabrics and the blocks. I'm going to page it over to the small because that's the one I'm making for the sew along. And what I like to do is I like to write my colors that I put for fabric one, two, three, four, and five, et cetera. 
So I will show you that. This is going to be my fabric one. It's just a nice crisp white. My fabric two is going to be a light pink. My fabric three is going to be a dark pink. And then four, I have a light green and a dark green. So I do like to label my fabrics up here just so I don't have to try to remember because I have a mind like a sieve and everything just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so and then, then you'll see under each fabric, you'll see fabric one, for example, it says you need three quarters of a yard and it tells you to cut two strips, five and a half inches by width of fabric. And then you cross cut them into five and a half by five and a half. So as you go through, you'll see your cutting directions for each color. When we get down to the dark pink, it says to cut two strips, eight inches by width of fabric, and then you cross cut them seven by eight inches. So it just gives you an idea how to, or it gives you exactly how to cut each fabric. Now, there's a section here where we have to cut diamonds and triangles so let's talk about that because some of them are not they're not exactly square there's also a file called in your usb these are optional wool cutting templates so you can open that up and give give these you know, print them all up I'll always check your one inch block to make sure that the scale is correct. Um, you wanna choose actual size when you print this. Sometimes it'll say fit to page or some words to that effect, but then you wanna measure this one inch little square and make sure it is truly one inch. And then what I like to do is cut them out and I like to laminate them so I can use these to cut my wool. And in this particular quilt, we're also gonna use them as a guide to cut our, um, our fabric for, for the triangles and for the diamonds. I will talk a minute, a little bit more on the templates in just a minute, but I wanted to show you that first. Because it says in the fabric and thread key that I can go to page seven to learn how to cut my wool triangle or my W triangle and my diamonds. And that's gonna be this page right here. We're actually gonna use this template as a guide to cut it. It's just gonna help you out. So for example, I've got a little strip of fabric here and I will lay this on here. Now this is my wool template. So we do not want to cut it exactly on the line. We want to give yourself an extra inch. So that's what I'm going to do here. Give myself an extra inch. And this is all laid out on page seven of your fabric and thread key. So there I've got plenty of fabric to make my diamond. And I will do the same thing for my triangle block, if this will fit. That one doesn't quite fit, but you get the idea. You want to have your template laid there, and you want to give yourself an inch on all four sides of your template. And then you can get a, a little bit easier cut instead of cutting a big square and wasting all your fabric. So all right, so up next. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, someone asked if the digital download includes those templates. And yes, she. Yeah. The, the USB and the download will have the exact same stuff. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I talked I talked to you a little bit about this. This is the, uh, the printout that you can do for the optionable templates. I just printed this one, but you'll actually have several pages that will have all of these different templates. If you don't, if there are some people that have printers that aren't cooperating with your little one inch. So we've also included the optional wool embroidery files. And all it is is a straight line stitching. You can see that. It's just I hooped a, a lightweight cutaway stabilizer, or it could be tearaway as well. And I stitched out my file. And it's the exact same size as the template that I printed. And I can use this for my wool. So I would just cut this out really, really close to the line. And then I will use this to cut out my wool my optional wool, if you're going to do the optional wool. So here you can see my wool fits that exactly. Hey, Linda. Yes. Elaine has a question. I'm popping it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. 
she said, so you don't trim in the hoop, the wool and or fabric. Elaine, I do not, we do not trim the wool in the hoop. The idea is that the wool will stay inside the block, not on the outer edge where we're sewing our seams together. Because if you trim it while it's in the hoop, if you put a big piece of wool down, stitch it and then trim it, you're going to have a lot of extra bulk in your seam, which is, it's just going to make it more difficult to put together. So we give you these templates because it makes them just a tiny bit smaller than your block and it keeps that wool inside your, your uh, stitching so that you don't have that extra bulk in the seam allowance. Now the fabric we do make bigger. Obviously we have to make the fabric bigger to cover it all, but the wool I want that to stay contained with inside the block. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now this is the real reason for these little templates. It's for the optional wool if you're doing it. And you can, you can see I trimmed it exactly on the, the black line. And I have a little strip of wool here. And I did cut my wool strip the width of this template. So it'll just fit right on there. And then I'll just take a rotary cutter and just carefully cut it right along that line. Turn it around and then I'll cut this side. And because I laminated it, you don't have to. Um, obviously, um, on your stabilizer, well, you probably could laminate this too. It just gives it a little, a little bit stiffer, like I can hold it down a little bit easier and my rotary cutter blade runs right along it. If you don't laminate it, that's fine too. You can still cut it. Sometimes when I don't laminate it, I find I trim a little bit of the paper and then I may need to have a couple sets of templates because eventually I cut too much off. So you want to make a piece of wool for each block you're doing. And then I think, Aubrey, you posted the video on how to prepare the wool. Yes, I yesterday. posted it today. I was a day late and a dollar short, but it oh, is in okay. there today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can go back and review that if you've never done it. But you can see the difference between, see this edge of my wool and look at this edge of my wool. This edge, this is going to be the petal block that I'm going to demonstrate, but this has got a really thin edge. What I did was I took it to my ironing board and I laid just the very edge of my iron right along there. And I just kept turning it and laying that right along there. And it, you could see it kind of seals that wool on the edge. I find if I try to attach the wool when it's in its natural fluffy state, my foot might get caught in there, my needle gets caught in there. I have to get my hands a little bit too close for comfort <laughs> to keep that from happening. So I just take a minute and do all these and it just works out so much better. And I see Elaine asks, what temperature is the iron? My <clears throat> iron is always cranked to nuclear fusion. I always have it <laughs> as, as high as it'll go. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't even find it makes a mess on the iron at all it just if it's hot enough it melts it quickly and i just peel you know i just move the iron away and keep going so i see another, i see yeah. another important question that i feel like we should differentiate right now while we're talking about wool um linda over on youtube asks by wool you're referring to it as batting right and i know yes, that we want to talk about battleizer too and make sure we clear this up we are going to clear that up right now so we have a product called Battleizer. Let's talk about all the different wolves that we're using here. Um, we have a product called Battleizer, which I have in my hoop right here. And this is a batting stabilizer combination. You can see I'm really pulling this and it's not stretching out of shape at all. It's, in, it's perfect. It's got a scrim on the back of it. And this is what we put in our hoop. And we, do, we build our blocks all on this. The wool I'm referring to is we use Quilter's Dream wool, or this happens to be Quilter's Dream poly, which so if you're allergic to wool, or wool, the Quilter's Dream wool has kind of a yellow tinge to it. And if you're putting white fabric on it, you might see that yellow through there. So the poly is a good alternative. And it's, it's just, it reacts just like the wool. It just gives it a little extra poof to make your blocks to make your quilting stand out beautifully. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I think 
I covered everything on my fabric and thread key except I will mention on the last page we do give you a little coloring page if you want to experiment with some different colors in your rolling star you can see where all your different fabric colors go so you can sit there and color away I love coloring coloring's fun <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we can talk about our rolling star block. I'm going to go ahead and stitch the petal block, which is this pretty um, shape right here. And I started with step one, and I stitched the placement stitch. Now, normally, let's talk a little bit about thread as well. For each of your rolling star colors, remember I had all of these colors, you can pick a thread that goes with it so for example on my color one which is my white i didn't want white quilting i picked the palest palest green even paler than this fabric mm -hmm. to put on there so you could do white you could do you know or you could do something that's going to show a little bit so i picked the really pale green and then on these two fabrics i picked the matching color for each on part of my quilt I did the light color thread on the dark fabric and on part of it I did the dark color thread on the light fabric. So that's another option you could do. On my pink, I did choose a shade that's slightly darker. And then my light pink, I chose a thread that matched that as well. So you can do a slight contrast or a real close match. That's going to be entirely up to you how you do that. The other thread you will need is our Vanished Light Thread. This is by Superior Thread. It's available in the little 300 yard spools or this 2000 yard cone. Um, I'm about to run out, so I'm gonna open this one pretty soon. So you definitely need, need that. I'll explain why you need that as we go. You will need one of the pre-wound or embroidery bobbin thread bobbins. You do not need to wind a bobbin with your embroidery thread. You could just do the pre-wound. So I see somebody ask, do we place wool in all the squares? Yes, ma'am, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, so I already did step one on my battleizer, and you are supposed to use the Vanish Light thread for this step, but just so you could see it on our little video today, I did use a dark blue. And it, what it does is it stitches out a placement stitch for the block that we're doing. And then the next step is we're gonna take the wool We'll place that exactly inside that placement stitch, and then it's gonna stitch down a tack down. So Aubrey, I'm gonna move my camera to the machine if you wanna talk to them a little bit while I set that up. Absolutely. Okay, well, she switches cameras. We've had a couple more people join us since the beginning of the live. So I just wanted to reiterate that we have the sew along dates here as well as the topics that Linda's gonna cover. Um, basically this Wednesday, also January 10th, uh, we're gonna, she's going to start talking about joining and that's going to kind of continue into January 17th. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with the edge to edge quilt files, which I know a lot of people are really excited about. Looks like you're ready, Linda. Give me two seconds more. Okay. <laughs> I kind of don't want the camera to fall off while I'm sewing. No problem. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. <clears throat> Oh, and Joni said uh, she likes bamboo as a wool replacement. So if somebody yeah. wants to try that too. That's a, that's a great idea. Anything good quality and fluffy. <laughs> okay. I think I'm ready. All right. Hopefully you can see me. Yep. Okay. I did turn last, uh, when, when we did a little live about, what, about a month ago, um, I had a lot of glare in my machine, so I turned off all the lights. Yeah. So I'm sewing in the dark, but hopefully you can see me. So you can see that this wool just fits within the stitching line here that I have. And again, you should be using water-soluble thread for this step. I'm going to use a blue so you can see it. And this, this is step two. So it's just going to do a kind of a wide open zigzag to tack the wool down I don't know if you can tell but if I didn't press the edges of my wool with the iron before I did this this little foot here would 
kind of struggle to get through that and it might get caught. So it's well worth the time to do that. Um, Lois asked, she said she's doing the Meadow Star for a baby quilt. Would you recommend the wool? Um, the wool might add a little bit more thickness than you might want for a baby quilt. So um, maybe you would consider like stitch a block in each one, do a little sample and see what you think. Um, the other thing I would recommend for the baby quilt for the back, if you guys are going to do um, the files include a quilted back, a pre-quilted back, you could use flannel instead of another piece of batting, which will also lighten up the baby quilt because you want baby quilts to be snuggly. Yeah. Okay. So here is my fabric. I'm going to put it right side up. I am going to keep my blue thread in, uh, but you really should use water soluble because if you don't use water soluble, when you go to sew your blocks together, um, you may have to pick some thread out, which is not fun. <laughs> so the, by using the water sol soluble, you can just dab it a little bit with some water, like a Q-tip, dipped in water, and your stitches will go away. So that is step three, and it's my tack down. By the way, every block in Rolling Star, every single one, no matter the shape, have the exact same steps. So they go really fast. Now it's time for me to do my quilting. So I'm gonna switch my thread to my pink. While you're switching thread, um, someone asked, they said, so are these dates all for this project? And the answer is yes. We've got four live classes with Linda. Um, it's gonna be for the two quilts that are included in the barn quilt collection, yes. We are taking you through the entire process from beginning to end. I love it. <laughs> Someone else said they have a lot of batiks that are going to work really well in this project. Oh, yeah. Batiks work great. I love batiks. One of my favorites. Okay, so now I have my quilting thread in and I'm just going to let the machine run. It's going to run around about seven minutes and stitch the quilting on this block. And we're not going to watch it for seven minutes. We're going to come back, but I'm going to just reset up my camera and show you about Meadow Star, how that works for the fabric and thread key. And while Linda's setting up her camera, I'm actually going to flip over here. I know another commonly asked question is sizing. So I want to um, share this with you. As I just mentioned, both of these quilt layouts are included in the Barn Quilt Collection. So whether you get it as a download or a USB, uh, both of these are going to be in there, which is really exciting, as well as all three of the sizes. Um, the sizes do differ based on which quilt you're working with, uh, but we have <clears throat> basically the approximate finish size and the largest file size. So you can make sure that your machine uh, can do this quilt. And we're going to walk you through during this so long, we're going to actually walk you through uh, both. So it's going to be exciting. Okay. I think I'm good, Aubrey. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see this. And hopefully you can hear me. My machine's running in the background, but I will try to speak up so you can hear me. So look at this. Look what I made last night. Isn't this fun? <laughs> oh yeah you've been busy <laughs> so let's talk about our meadow star fabric and thread key and it's laid out pretty much the same as the rolling star wait let me get my pages in order here first so page one is just like rolling star where it's going to have the quilt in color and with the overlay of the quilting 
and also the block names. So it kind of gives you an idea where each block is going to go. Page two, I gave you a little color direction and like for the, the sample that I made with all of your different fabrics numbered so you know where your fabrics go. And then page three, we have the large cutting instructions. Page four, we have the medium cutting instructions. And then page five, I've got the small cutting instructions. I'm working on the small here today for our sew along. So again, I wrote my cut my fabrics above each little section. So this is fabric one, and I'm going to use my fabric one as a red grunge. My fabric two is a white grunge. And then I have two shades of red. I have a light red for fabric three, a dark red for fabric four. I have a light teal for fabric five. I have a light gray for fabric six a medium gray for fabric seven, and a dark teal for fabric eight. And all the cutting directions, first of all, under fabric one, it'll say cut four six inch by six inch. So you do exactly that. You'll cut four pieces of fabric six by six, and then there's a small dotted line, and under that it says cut two strips six and a half by width of fabric. So you'll cut one six and a half inch strip, and then you're gonna cross cut into six and a half inch squares. And then wherever you see a little box with the, um, the box with the line going diagonally through it, you're gonna cut those six and a half inch squares for this is the small, remember, in half diagonally, which is what I've done here. So I have all my diagonal cuts made on all these bigger blocks. And I do recommend that you take the time to make some type of numbering system on your fabric so that you don't get confused because the next step is to go to your instructions. I'm in my barn quilt instructions for the metal star. And it talks about getting your half square triangle set up. So um, on page seven, it talks about making your pairs for your half square triangle. So you can review that, but basically it's, it's, it's going to take you through how to, how to pair all these up to get all your blocks made. So let's start with half square one. Half square one, we need to make all these different triangle pairs. So I'm gonna go through this. It'll actually say right there, six on the bottom, one on the top. So this is all you gotta do is, let me grab my pins. So the first one, it says six on the bottom, one on the top. So I'm gonna grab fabric six. I'm gonna place it right side up. I'm gonna take a fabric one triangle and put it right sides to that one. So I have my fabric six on the bottom, my fabric one on the top, and I will take a pin and put it an inch and a half away from my cut edge. And this is my first triangle pair. Now this actually says I have to do two of these. So I would make two, two of these with six on the bottom, one on the top. And then I would do a seven on the bottom and a one on the top. put them right sides together, put the pin in. And I would do two of those as well. Eight on the bottom is the next one. So here's my eight. <laughs> I just decided to switch <laughs> screens on us for no reason. <laughs> eight on the bottom, one on the top. And I'm keeping the pin an inch and a half away. So you would just go down that whole list. I'll do a couple more. Three on the bottom. You can see how easy it is if you get it all organized like this. And then this one is two on the top. So that's this one. And 
my next one is three on the seven on the bottom and two on the top so seven and two <clears throat> so you would do that for each block it's going to tell you to make your let me get that closer to make your triangle pairs right there and just follow that and do um make sure your fabric uh six is on the bottom one on the top do whatever it says and do two of each or four of each whatever it says and then once you get them all put together you can take all of this and put it in a put it in a separate area and then this is going to be for your half square triangle one so each of the different blocks has the same triangle pairings let me show you this one so this is half square triangle one m and we have some more triangle pairings to make for this so i went ahead and did that with all of my fabrics before i started so that i could just take it right to the machine and get stitching hopefully that makes sense yeah i think it was perfect i, I do want to mention this quick question for anyone who might be new around here linda um, Linda over on YouTube asks, if you're making this block as a quilt, would you pre-wash fabric and batalizer and wool? She said she knows wool shrinks, but she's not familiar with the batalizer. Nope. I don't pre-wash anything. Mm -mm. There you go. No, I don't, I don't find it necessary. Uh, I do, I will use like a color catcher when my quilt is done. If I'm going to watch, uh, wash it when it's finished, I will use a color catcher or two in the wash with it. It's something you could get at the grocery store. And if any fabric is going to fade or um, have a problem, it'll go into the color catcher. Um, but no, I don't pre-wash fatalizer or wool. And wool batting really doesn't, a good quality wool batting doesn't shrink hardly at all. So it's really not a problem. Okay, so check out my block. Look at that gorgeous quilt. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to rehoop this and we're going to stitch out a metal star block. So just give me a minute to set my machine up. And All right, and, and I did see a comment that someone over on Facebook said that they got theirs and they were totally confused, even though they made a bunch of hoop sisters, but within a couple minutes of watching you start explaining, they're like, Oh, this is going to be so simple. Oh, so, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so the lives are great. These, these little mm -hmm. mini classes help. So I have also seen a couple comments asking, how do I get this project or can I still participate in this project? And of course you can. Um, we actually have it on the website, hoopsisters.com, um, the design you'll get both of these quilts for 129. They do come in all three of the sizes I showed earlier. And um, obviously we have some live classes, four live classes with it. And we do recommend that you pair it with um, at, at least 15 yards of batalizer. You might need more, but that's a good starting point. And <clears throat> excuse me, we also do have shops uh, local quilt shops who have this design in their store and they're listed there on the screen. So if you're thinking about participating, you can also get it from a local quilt shop if you have one in your neck of the woods that's that's doing it. I see some questions coming in. So I want, let's see, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm answering everything. Will I get those shops up there so you guys can take a peek at those? Um, somebody, oh, Kathy on YouTube asked, do we have kitted materials? Um, we don't have kitted materials, but we do recommend our batalizer and our trimmer. So if you're ordering and you're on our website or you're visiting one of the shops that's pulled up on the screen now, um, those are some things that we definitely recommend. We also have a strip stick um, that we talked about during our workshop that'll help you when uh, pressing your seams when you have wool. So that's available on there. So I will pop the link to the ordering from us um, in the comments now. And pretty much everything you need in terms of kitted supplies uh, that we offer is at that link. And again, you can check out the shops that are on the screen now um, if you want to order from a local quilt shop. 
and I'm sure they would be glad to help you with fabric. We do give you a fabric and thread key, um, so you can pick that out at your local sh local shop. You ready, Linda? I'm ready. All right. Okay, so here we are with the machine again. I'm going to start from scratch on this one. And again, step one and step two, you should definitely use water-soluble uh, thread, but I'm going to use a dark thread so it can be seen. Step one is always going to be the placement stitch. And I happen to be stitching half square three block today, but the steps are going to be pretty much the same for every one of them. The, the biggest thing you need to do is pay attention to your triangle squares that pairs that we set up and make sure that your pin side is always facing up. Do you remember when we put the two fabrics right sides together and then we put a pin? The pin is always gonna be the top. Never put it on this way because if you're gonna have a problem, it's not gonna to go together right. So here's step one, which is a placement stitch for your battle or for your wool if you're going to use wool. Um, if you're not using wool, I should have mentioned this, you just skip that step on, on the, um, the sewing machine, just go to step three. But I'm going to use wool. So again, I've cut my wool to size according to the uh, fabric and thread key, and I did iron my edges. I'm using a dark thread, but we recommend you use the water soluble. And you can see um, someone that asked about laying the wool down without cutting it first. This, um, this wool will be inside your block, not in the seam allowance. So it'll be nicer. It's a lot better if you cut it out first. The other thing I neglected to mention in the last block demo, if you have the ability to raise the height of your foot, if you're using wool, if you're not using wool, it's not an issue, but you can raise the height of your foot just a little bit so it clears the wool and, and, and doesn't push it along. So I just raised the height of this foot because I have a lot of seams in the middle and it's going to help me out. The next step is a placement stitch and it's pretty much just going to stitch a line right, not down the middle, it's going to be like a quarter inch off. So I know where to place my wool or my fabric triangle. So we'll let it stitch that placement stitch next. And right now I do have my machine at the top speed. But for this next step, I'm going to slow it down. So if you have the ability to slow your machine down, I would definitely do that. Because at this point, we're going to lay our triangle pair right side up that would be the side with the pin in it notice my pins are a good inch and a half away from my cut edge because i'm going to be stitching here and i don't want that foot to interfere with the pins if i tried doing this without pins trust me you don't want to that put those pins in there this is the small quilt i have three so if you're doing a larger block you might even want to do a, a one or two more so you're going to lay that cut edge right along that stitching line that it just did and you want to make sure it's pretty much centered so i have the same overhang here on this side as i do up here and i slowed my machine down and then my job is to just keep this fabric in place and you can see how much easier it is when it goes slower but i'm not panicked and having a problem so there it, it went beautifully got a nice quarter inch seam and the thread for this seam should be a neutral thread um, I had a neutral thread in but if you had water soluble here you should change this to a neutral thread and then you could just check to be sure that you've cropped both sides which I have so hopefully you can see that nice quarter inch seam and at this point we are going to take out our pins open this up and then I would definitely put the water soluble thread back in the machine. I won't take the time to do that for today's demo, but you should definitely do the water soluble thread so that when you sew this block to the next block, if you have water soluble thread in and it shows just a little, you can very easily take it out. So I'm still going to go fairly slow for this step and open this out. And I'm, I'm taking this corner and just giving it 
a slight pull just to keep it nice and flat. I'll touch my start button. And usually once I get past this next corner, I can speed that machine up a little bit. So if you picked a thread, I didn't talk about the thread for Metal Star. You can also pick thread that matches or that coordinates um, with your fabrics. If you picked the thread that matches, you would put for the next step, I think we're going to sew this side first, I would put like a matching thread in here. And then when it goes to this side, I would change to this, the thread that matches this fabric. On this Metal Star block, I'm kind of excited to show you when we get there, probably we'll show some of it. Well, I'll show a little bit of it later because I have a few finished blocks. I'm using all the same color thread on this one. I'm using kind of a, like a taupey brown color. And so this will do the quilting part. This will take three minutes to complete this block. So we can either watch this, Aubrey, or you can... Well, let's watch Answer it for a question. second and then I'll okay. switch. But well, that's going on. Uh, Marie asked, can you do this on a multi-needle or do you have to have, or is a single needle better? Because she, this, this Marie has all the machines. <laughs> oh, Marie, you should load them all up and do it all, all of them at once. You'll get them all faster. <laughs> that's right. There and you go. If all you have them at a once. machine, if you have a machine with a really large hoop, you can put several blocks in one hoop too. So. Yeah, if you have a multi-needle, go ahead and use it. If you have both, use both of them. Get them done quickly. Perfect. Okay, then the other thing I want to share with you guys, if you haven't already seen it, um, so we've got the sew along going on, but we also have a new workshop coming up that I'm excited to share with you all. This one is called the Heartfelt Half Square Workshop uh, with Annie. And this is actually coming up next Monday and Tuesday. Typically, we like to stitch a block out, show you the new design, stitch something out for you so you can see how it all works. And then the next day, we go over the trimmer by George and how to use our trimming tool to remove the bulk from your seams to get uh, your blocks ready to join together. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, we do stream live again on, on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're one of the people watching now, it's the same spot, same time. We do it at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Standard Time, and 11 a.m. Um, over on California's side. So <clears throat> this is coming up. And I would recommend that you register in advance on our website. Um, I'll drop a link here in the comments in just a moment. But registering in advance is fantastic because you, number one, you get a free downloadable gift that's super cute and you can start stitching out right away. And then also we do send the replays to your email afterwards. So are you guys registered? Are you registered? It's going to be awesome. I am. I am. <laughs> All right. Are you at your demo cam? At your? I am. You can turn it on. All right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, it's almost done stitching and then I'll show you how to trim it. But I wanted to show you in your instructions, this is, let's see, I'm looking on, okay, let's start here. Page five, this block, this is the one block that has just one color of fabric. And this is actually gonna be a corner. So um, you wanna stitch, it says to stitch four of these with fabric one and four with fabric two. So this happens to be my fabric one block. And then you'll notice at the bottom of your instructions, it's got these cute little images. And what you want to do, this block, this block happens to be A1. Hopefully you can see that. I labeled it A1. You want to look at these images and place that block in that particular orientation. So hopefully you can see that one's A1. Then we have an H1, H8, A8. These are the four corners of the quilt. The ones down here, these are gonna be inside the quilt. 
And again, you want to look at the orientation of this, this diagonal line and also the orientation of the wood grain quilting stitching. And then you want to label the block accordingly. So this block is actually says A1 on there. And this will help you positioning everything when it's finished. Let me find an image of that so I can show you. I think I can show you with this. So the way we do it, this is row A, row B, row C. This would be one, two, three, four. So A1 would actually go in the corner. So if you label these when they come out of the hoop every single time, putting it together is going to be a breeze. The other thing I wanted to point out is the red lines. I, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a facing on your quilt as opposed to a binding. So if you're making a binding and you don't want to do the facing, the red lines mean that you have to trim those edges a little bit differently than the other edges, in which we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about the trimmer by George. So you want to pay attention also to where the red lines are, because that means you're going to leave your extra battleizer and your extra fabric within your seam allowance so that you can add your uh, binding to that. Okay, my blocks are done. So we're going to talk about trimming using the trimmer by George. Okay, so this is my trimmer by George. In case you don't know what it is, this is an acrylic ruler that's four and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches long. And the interesting thing about it is it's got this metal edge, this crimped metal edge right there that prevents you from cutting fabric, your, your block fabric on the top of your block. So you'll see how this works. I'll cut the, I'll do the metal star first. So let's say, for example, this one isn't that, but let's say, for example, this is a corner of my quilt, my completed quilt. This is the top left corner. And I'm going to be adding a binding. So what I would do is I would just use the, the side of the trimmer by George where the, with the crimp facing up. It's going to have markings for, for um, cutting. I would put my basting line on the quarter inch line and I would rotary cut that off. I'll go ahead and do it. I'm not going to use this one anyway in my actual quilt. So I rotary cut that off. So this edge has plenty of fabric and batting in there to accommodate the um the binding so this will be the other corner so that's how you would trim for the corner of your quilt now this edge and this bottom edge is going to be attached to another block within my quilt and i don't want this battleizer in here because it's going to be too bulky so what we do with the trimmer is we turn this fabric up like this and we take the crimped metal edge of the trimmer, lay it flat on the table, and I do what I like to say a shimmy just to get that crimped edge as close as I can to the basting line. Fold the ruler down, the trimmer down. I give my battleizer a little bit of tug and I make sure no fabric is sticking out over here. This is my metal edge. I definitely want to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter for this because it has the height to accommodate the, the thickness of the trimmer. And I'll just take the rotary cutter and keep it nice and flat to the metal edge and just trim off that battleizer. It removes just the battleizer and it does not let me cut the fabric on the front. So all edges that get joined to another block get trimmed using the trimmer by George. So once the battleizer is removed, we have a lot of extra fabric here. So I like to trim that off. And sometimes it's easier to do it from the back side. Like I have, I have a, the battleizer and the dark fabric 
so I can see that really well. So I'm just going to use the back side and I flip my trimmer over with the ruler side facing up. I've got my edge of my battleizer on my quarter inch line. Just give that a trim. This one I can see better on this side. Do my quarter inch here. So this is how you would trim your block. Now what you wanna do after that, let me go to that page here. And show you that block. You're going to want to look at your the page after the sewing instructions. Like for example, this says A3. This is my block A3. And I can see that the feather quilting, it's probably hard for you to see, but the feather quilting is in my upper right, and my wood grain quilting is in my lower left my wood grain is actually horizontal. So I will put an A3 at the very top of that block because that is the orientation that it needs to go in the quilt. Also on A3 on, on these instructions, there's a red line. So if I'm going to do binding versus a facing, I don't wanna be trimming off the battleizer. If you're doing facing, you can go ahead and trim every single block, all four sides with the trimmer by George. Hopefully that makes sense. Linda, I don't even quilt and I feel like I'm getting it. So you're doing a great job. <laughs> well, thank you, so I'll just show one more of these. Um, this is, I labeled this block A4. And in my instructions, A4 is right here. And you can see my, my orientation of my diagonal line the orientation of the quilting, the wood grain quilting is horizontal, and you can see the feather. I also double check my fabrics. This is fabric one, this is fabric seven. I just give that a double check too, because it makes life easier if you go along and everything is the way it should be before you go to the next step. Any okay, questions have, we need? I was gonna say, I have a couple if you have a minute. Yep. Um, the first is, I think this is a good thing to kind of mention and talk about. Um, Linda over on YouTube was talking about moving the the hoop along the battleizer. Mm -hmm. um, so I figured we could talk about that and Frankenbatten, just kind of a quick overview. I could even post a video of that in the group later. And then the second question I thought you could maybe touch on now or let us know when it's coming. I know we talked about when it's coming later, but what's the difference between the facing and the binding, which I know we're gonna get into in another session, but maybe if you wanna talk about those things. Well, I would assume everybody knows what binding is. I'm going to assume you all know what a binding is on a quilt. A facing is a more modern version. So you do not see anything on the front of the quilt. You just see the edge of the quilt and it's just, there's nothing else, there's no binding. On the back of the quilt, you see like, like a facing in a garment, you know, like in, if you have a blouse that has a facing around the edge, around the neck, um, that's kind of what it is. Everything is on the back of the quilt. So, hey, I can grab a quilt and show real quick. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. And I on. love that you did the facing on the barn quilt because, you know, a barn quilt is typically like painted on a barn. Right. And so they don't, don't necessarily want to have a binding, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Here. I went into the other room. I don't know if you can see it. So this this is the edge of my barn quilt and there's no binding. But if I turn it over, you can see this is this is my facing. There it is on the very edge. And I do a little corner treatment and there's no bulk there either. It's actually, I, I teach this class in our store a couple of times a year. And people find this easier to do than binding because you don't have to miter the corner. It's so simple, it's, it's unbelievable. There is hand sewing involved, but it's very simple to do. So that's the difference. And yes, we are gonna cover that probably the very last class. And you also mentioned Frankenbat. Yeah, Aubrey. moving the moving the hoop along or Frank, oh, yeah. Frankenbat, just ways to save on battleizer. Mm -hmm. So, I was using my small hoop today because I was just sewing one block for the demo. Um, I do have a huge hoop for this machine and I'll load that up. 
Um, so that's another option to save on Batalyzer instead of doing one at a time. If you have a hoop this size, a real easy way to save Batalyzer is pretty much the way I did it. I have one long strip of Batalyzer. I put my block in the hoop, but if you're sewing a bunch of them, I could have moved that block instead of sewing dead center. I could have moved it way up to the top, stitch my block, cut it off, rehoop my fabric, keep moving it to the top. Or the other way around, if I have my battleizer hooped in the hoop with the bottom of the battleizer here, I could have moved it to the bottom and my excess battleizer is here and move my block to the bottom and just cut it off and rehoop and restitch. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Another way to save it, battleizer, as you're trimming, as you can see, I have two little scraps here. Now these are a little small for me, but I do know people that would sew these together. I usually try to trim my blocks and have big chunks left over and I'll save those and I'll probably throw away the smaller ones like this. But you can put these right sides together. Now let's say they're not perfectly straight. You can overlap them a little bit, put a straight edge on them. And when you cut and peel away the excess on the top and the bottom, you got a perfect, a perfect match. And I could put this in my machine and just use a white thread and do a zigzag to hold them together. So they're not overlapping. They don't make any extra bulk and they're very strong because there's a lot of quilting in our blocks. So you don't need to worry about them coming apart. Okay. All right, I have one more block to trim. This is the block from the Rolling Star. And this is just gonna get all, all the edges trimmed. There's one, two, three, four, five edges on this one. This particular block does not touch the edge of the quilt. So I don't have to worry about leaving extra battleizer on for um, a binding. But if you are doing a binding, just follow along on the instructions and it will tell you in there what, at which edges that you need to leave the extra battleizer for your binding. But the facing, I think you should try it. It's a lot of fun to do. And it looks good. Kathy on YouTube um, is saying, there's gonna be a little bit of battleizer remaining in the quarter inch seams. Trimmer by George removes most of the battleizer. Am I, or am I missing something? No, it'll, there'll be a tiny, tiny bit. Thank you. But there shouldn't be wool if you may, if you use the templates. So now I'm turning this over. That's why you don't, you want to use the templates for the wool because you just don't want more bulk in there. So I'm trimming the back, leaving an extra quarter inch. There we go. There's all of our blocks. So cute. You you did those quick too. Yeah, they're very fast. All right, I do see a couple questions I think you should answer. Um, Judy on YouTube asked, is there a top or front versus bottom or back on the battleizer? It's a good question. Well, there is. Um, I like to use, hold on, I'm pulling a scrap out of the trash. <laughs> 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 it's it's very hard to see here, but if you if you look at your battleizer, you're going to have a side that looks fluffier and a side that looks almost like it's got something on it. And the something that is on it is called a scrim. There's just a you can feel it's rougher on one side than the other side. So I like to put the scrim side down, especially if you're not going to use wool because you'll have a little bit more loft if you put the scrim side at the bottom of your hoop so your loft is on the top if you're putting wool on it frankly doesn't matter because you're going to cover it with wool anyway but i i'm just i'm old school and i've always put the scrim down so that's how i do it <laughs> this is another great question georgette um, what is the difference between battleizer and other brands of batting the scrim <laughs> <laughs> this is cut is it 26 wide aubrey i always forget Oh gosh, you asked me too quick. I, I think, think it's 24 20, inches, yeah. 24 inches wide yep. by, 
It comes in uh, five yard bolts. It comes in 15 yard bolts and 30 yard bolts. Yep. And the 24 is so that you're not having to open a huge king size or queen size batting and cut it up. But the huge difference is the scrim because I can literally do this to it and it doesn't, I can't poke my finger in it. A lot of battings, you can poke your finger right through it or you can see through it. This is very, very, very stable so that when I put this in my embroidery hoop, it doesn't mess up the batting and it, it will take all the stitching that we do. So it's, it's like a batting stabilizer combination. So it's really different than regular batting. All right, wonderful. Okay, here's another question. This one I don't know the answer to. Um, Dawn asked, for all my embroidery projects, I usually use Flex 101 on the fabric. Am I going, am I going, that I'm going to embroider? Do you put that uh, on the fabric before you do the embroidery? There is no need to do that. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an iron-on, I believe it's an iron-on stabilizer. Okay. So, so there's no so need to do that. If that's what it is, then yeah, I mean, we the battleizer will take care of that for you. All right. So someone asked why not use stabilizer in batting. So I think that maybe Linda just answered that. Um, and maybe we saw that comment came in before we answered it, but um, that way you don't have to use two products. You just hoop that one thing and you're yeah. done. You don't have to use two products and it will be softer with just the battleizer. Okay. All right. Anything else, Linda? I can't think of anything. I hope we answered everybody's questions. Oh, I don't <laughs> need to be big on here. There we go. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. So to wrap things up, I think maybe Linda, we should show the schedule one more time. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what we're doing next week. And if you guys have questions, now's a really great time to get those answered. And maybe I will also show again how to access the few PDF updates that we had after you go through the schedule. Okay, so the schedule for next week is we're going to have a short, well, it's like a medium length video, part one of putting together Rolling Star. A uh, Rolling Star, in case you didn't notice, has few Y has Y seams in them, and everybody's like, "Ooh, I'm afraid of Y seams." <laughs> Hopefully, you'll see by watching this video. It's not that bad. There's just a few basic things you need to know to do the Y seams. So we're going to go through part one of Rolling Star next week. And we're also going to join together some of Meadow Star next week. The week after that, we're going to continue with the joining. And we're going to talk about the edge to edge quilting files the last week and also the facing for the quilt as opposed to binding for the last week. So I'm excited. This should be fun. Yeah, and Sandra just asked in the comments, is there a video for facing? And the answer is yes, but it will be a live video on January 24th. So make sure yeah. you stick around for that. Um, yes, you can rewatch today's video. Absolutely. All right, Linda, if you want to take a look at the comments, well, I'm going to take them back into the Facebook group and explain how to access the updates again, because I feel like that's important. And we've gotten some new viewers since we began. So I'm going to share my screen and take you guys over to our, this is our VIP Facebook group. And it's called Hoop Sisters Quilt in the Hoop VIPs. Um, there's links to this in a bunch of emails that we have sent out. So if you're participating in the Barn Quilt Collection, you've probably gotten an email and it'll have a link directly here. Um, if you did the, the, if you participated with a digital download, you can just re-download the files. If you purchased it on a USB, you'll want to get your hands on these updates in here. So once you're in the Facebook group, um, you can just go right here to guides. And once you click guides, the very first thing is our customer service information. The next guide, guide two, is all things barn quilt collection. Every every sew along video that we're gonna do is gonna be in here after the video's over. Um, so it'll basically have all of the information that we feel is important that we want you to have easy access to. So the four PDF files, there um, have some minor updates. It didn't stop Joni. Joni knew it. It's Joni <laughs> figured it out, right? So um, they're nothing crazy, but just so you have 
the most up-to-date stuff. The other thing I wanted to point out quickly is I just showed you where the guides are. But if you go in the group, there's also a featured tab, which is located here, as well as the very first thing you'll find here. And this will have basically all of the most relevant things that we have going on, um, including a reminder about the dates and times for the rest of the barn quilt. So along. So any questions that you saw that you want to answer? I was just scrolling through there. I think Nina's on it. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think we got most of them. So, okay. and I see my friend Eileen Lloyd. Hi, Eileen. I see you and Susan. So that's cool. I know. I saw Susan in there too, and she was giving some good advice in the comments as you yeah. were stitching along. So that's great. Right. I'm also popping um, our customer service phone number and email address. It's the best way to go. If you guys have questions, you're welcome to post things in Facebook, but if it's a customer service type question, we don't always see them timely or we saw it, but we're in the middle of dinner and then we go back and we can't find it. So the best <laughs> thing to do is uh, reach out to us directly if you have questions and we will get you all taken care of. Okay. All right. I think we did it. Yay. Session one done. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Aubrey. Thanks All right. for joining us. Yes. We'll see you next Wednesday. Same time, same place. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.